Hello, uh, good morning. It's Sadil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European, well, should we say, US markets for the trading session Wednesday, 13th September 2018. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signal to market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. And you can certainly download us at the uh, Google, or certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so it's been giving you a sort of midweek uh, update on the uh, US indices, given the fact that we've had uh, trade wars. Uh, the Fed, obviously, as well, certainly um, coming into uh, into play in terms of uh, hawkish stance going forward. And also, we've got the uh, situation ongoing in regarding Canada and uh, Mexico in terms of NAFTA and also uh, emerging market crisis via Turkey uh, and Venezuela. So let's see exactly how the markets are technically set up, really, uh, for the week ahead, especially with the BOE and the ECB certainly on tap today. Okay, so and also given the fact we've got Brexit concerns as well. So yesterday it was all talk was all about Apple. Uh, now, from my perspective, Apple failed to provide anything new, no innovation there. Uh, same old, same old regurgitated old um, obviously uh, devices that really don't offer any value to the individual at all. Hence the reason why I've stopped buying Apple quite some time ago. So uh, are we at a market top? Now, ask the question. So uh, given the uh, technical picture here, Obviously, we've been in this channel quite some while. Uh, we failed to obviously hit that upper level in the channel. And where do we go from now? Ever since that, we put that market top in with regards to Facebook uh, earnings, etc. Apple earnings certainly will will be the damper from my perspective. Uh, I will certainly be keeping an eye on this potential pattern here. Okay, all eyes on this pattern and all eyes on the potential uh, right shoulder on the uh, Nasdaq. Okay, we are now holding resistance here around the 7510. Certainly expecting that to hold and looking for a potential reversal, especially with regards to yesterday's dud from Apple okay so uh, uh, again I increasing the power of the chips it's not really going to uh, obviously uh, ward off uh, potential um, competition and will not sustain the uh, the current pricing levels especially in terms of the share prices and earnings etc going forward from my understanding and my interpretation especially with the trade war obviously looming as well uh, and especially given the fact that Mr Trump has actually threatened Apple as well in terms of its uh, potential components being made in the US and all of those areas uh, will certainly will, will drag on Apple to a large extent. I've just seen a latest, uh, the latest uh, potential analysis here with regards to Apple, as well. Uh, certainly falling down the the ladder in terms of uh, and also Nike as well in terms of China's uh, consumer. Okay, so again, uh, the growth certainly isn't going to be there and uh, certainly is non-existent. So all eyes on the uh, Nasdaq. So I was giving you an uh, insight here with regards to uh, uh, the. Uh, the chart for the Nasdaq, okay, you can see here increased volume on the sell side as well, so watch out here, increased volume on the sell side, that certainly isn't a bullish sign at all, okay, so bear that in mind, okay, looking for this right shoulder certainly to come into fruition and obviously the markets to move. Now the other obviously um, uh, a factor or the argument, a counter argument obviously would be China, if the US and, and China start trade talks again, etc., and that obviously awards off any further potential tariffs, etc., but I can't see that happening, especially with with the elections in the US coming and Mr. Trump obviously playing hardball to win further voters. So certainly take that into consideration as well. So certainly looking for a swoon in the equity markets to continue. Okay, so daily chart broken that key diagonal trend line, right shoulder certainly being put in. So again, watch out there. 60 minute chart, yes, we've bounced so far. I mean, the pivot top of the bounce really 7520. You've got then if you've got gap fill above. Can we really hit that? I'm certainly not expecting it to. That's my interpretation anyway. Again, um, my interpretation may well be wrong, so I'm happy to be wrong from that perspective. Stop losses are there to protect me. Okay, so uh, keep an eye on the Nasdaq. That certainly is one potential trade idea. Uh, now, let's just cross-reference the Nasdaq with the biotechs. Uh, biotechs. Let's look at the biotechs daily chart. Certainly fall from grace. Failed to make a higher high. Uh, well, sorry, made a higher high. Now the question is, do we make that higher low? We do have an unfilled gap below that needs to be closed. So watch out for that gap there. You got a gap here and a gap here. So the actual breakout certainly seems to be a breakout thus far, okay? Uh, especially given the fact that we broke out and we failed to, to hold that breakout zone, okay? So that certainly isn't a positive uh, move from my perspective anyway, okay? Again, multiple, multiple gaps we closed below. Certainly take that into consideration as well. Okay, so um, again, gap fill below on the uh, biotechs, not exactly a bullish move from that perspective. Let's look at the semiconductors. Let's just see if that backs the... Uh, potential move. Now the semiconductors have been in a potential um, symmetrical wedge uh, for a large extent or quite some time now, let's just put it that way. Uh, again, you've made a lower high there, again looking for a lower low. Uh, semicons certainly aren't confirming the rally in the Nasdaq, so 
Uh, and we all know it's all about Apple, and we all know it's only a few in uh, Fang stocks. Okay, actually, is Apple as is the Nasdaq all in all? So yesterday's bottoming tail was a, was a, was a telltale sign. Uh, again, certainly take that into consideration, especially given Apple obviously uh, declining as well, given the fact that there was no new innovation, there's no new demand for its products and chips. Okay, so certainly take that into consideration as well. Uh, if you do potentially fall, then you are looking at support around this zone. So watch out there. So from my perspective, biotech certainly weaker. Uh, semicons certainly not exactly putting in a higher high, so that certainly isn't a bullish sign. And uh, given the fact that we've got trade war concerns, etc., it's going to be very hard to sustain a move in, in the Nasdaq moving higher, going higher. So that's my interpretation. Now let's move on to the Dow. Uh, again, Dow is what Mr. Trump, the uh, moron, looks at. Okay, so uh, this is the moron index. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. Really, imbeciles, retards, uneducated fools look at this index and, and think it's the... Uh, the actual US stock market isn't unfortunately it's just a leading uh, top 30 but again I mean you can't stop an idiot from uh, misinterpreting can you unfortunately if we if we did we wouldn't have him as president and nor would uh, a lot of um, ignorant Americans be voting him in either way that's the status quo and again it's the same in Europe as well with all these populists and, and their ideas that never really last unfortunately and that's what gave birth to Hitler so just be very careful when you're voting folks okay use your brain think for yourself okay Either way, it's um, basically this is where we stand. Uh, again, uh, the gap fill certainly is acting as resistance for the Dow, uh, certainly failing to move any higher. Again, I guess, like I said, you've got emerging market concerns. We've got tariffs, so we've got Mexican, Mexico, NAFTA, uh, Canada, etc. I mean, there's a lot of variables out there. Obviously, hawkish Fed as well. Um, tariff trade wars alone, obviously, should should kill the, kill, kill the Dow to a large extent. So certainly take that into consideration. Cross-reference that with the Dow Transportation Index, okay. Let's just have a look here on the daily chart. Dow Transports, again, has made a new high. So you have to respect the Dow to a large extent from that perspective. So bear that in mind. But is that high sustainable? That's the question, folks, okay. It's more of a sugar eye based on tax cuts and will those tax cuts last? That's the question, okay. And is that additional, um, I mean, there's an argument there that a lot of these, a lot of the money that is coming back into the U.S., uh, etc uh, and why a tax cuts is actually uh, sustaining by share buybacks and that's the reason why you're actually seeing these indices higher it's not exactly uh, being invested into research and development etc or uh, further employment either so again that certainly is another question that needs to be asked okay and whether or not the uh, the tax cuts and the uh, potential deregulation is actually helpful for the average american and from my perspective i haven't seen any evidence of that as of yet Okay, so moving on, uh, S&P 500 now, let's just see exactly where we stand here. Uh, the daily chart on the S&P, uh, again, yes, higher highs and higher lows continue and sustain themselves. Uh, yes, we did hold previous resistance equal support to a large extent. Uh, okay, there is an unfilled gap that certainly needs to be closed below. Apple certainly has failed, uh, from my estimation anyway, uh, to really sustain or, or, or give any real impetus to the market. So again, certainly take that on board as well, especially with its uh, unveiling yesterday. It was more of an unveiling of the um, ignoramus, really, from my perspective and my understanding. Now, the S&P is capped at 28.96 gap fill. Okay, you got resistance again at 28.9, 29.04, then gap fill at 29.14. Certainly finding it very hard for the markets to certainly break through that. Okay, if anything, you're looking to potentially go down and close the gaps at 28.57. And then you've got, uh, obviously, um, further gap below, a massive gap below at 28.20. And again, that could be an economic shock that triggers that potential gap. So bear that in mind, okay? in terms of the s p okay now let's cross reference the s p with the um, russell okay so let's see exactly where the russell is russell 2000 here we go okay so to bring up the daily chart the russell yes i mean we have broken out to new highs again i mean you see it's always important for a broad based potential breakout and yes you are holding previous resistance equal support but can we sustain ourselves that's the question okay that's the question for my understanding and my interpretation. I mean, so far, Russell is supporting it, okay, and is just supporting a potential breakout. But again, you will need that sustained, and that sustainment will only come via the uh, China US potential trade deal or NAFTA trading. And I can't see that happening anytime soon, especially with the imbeciles that are working for the Trump government. Every other week, there's a revolving door, there's some member potentially leaving as well. Mr. Kudlow is an absolute moron. I've got no idea how he actually got the job. Actually, I do. Morons choose morons. But either way, I can't see him signing any potential deal with China either. Uh, and China certainly isn't concerned so far. OK, uh, one of the arguments, uh, again, um, uh, with regards to China is, uh, is the Chinese stock market down because of um, the uh, US threat of uh, tariffs, etc., or the imposition of tariffs? So is it down 
because it's actually trying to sustain or cool its economy. That's the question, okay? Uh, trying to drain liquidation, etc., uh, liquidity out of the market. So again, certainly take that into consideration too. But so far, I said the uh, the Russell certainly is supporting, provided this previous resistance equal support holds. If that breaks, then you are looking for quite a substantial drop, and then obviously that will trigger the gap fill for 28.57, and obviously gap fill down to 28.20. Okay. So again, a lot of it hinges on China and the US potential trade deal there. That certainly isn't happening anytime soon. Okay. And also concerns regarding emerging markets, uh, hawkish Fed. And let's see how the ECB and the uh, the BOE react today as well. Okay, I think that's a good summation really of uh, US indices. Some food for thought for you folks. Be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and market updates from leading providers. Goodbye.